Benley and you're listening to the TTM Podcast. Welcome to the TTM Sports Podcast. We're joined here today by Denzel Bentley at the gym where we've just sort of have an incredible spa today. How are you feeling, mate? I feel good, I feel good, man. I, you know, I've had a nice spa today. Uh, training done with the home. <laughs> no, fair yeah. enough, fair enough. And uh, obviously, what we want to give our listeners is a chance for you to talk about how you first got into boxing and the story surrounding that. Yeah, uh, basically, uh, when I was younger, about 15, my brother I bought gloves and head guard from the Niners market and his whole idea was uh, that people ch- charge people to kind of fight each other but we never got there in the end we just started putting it on and calling people out people calling us out and we would go around in the areas uh, like around our area sorry but in like different blocks or parks and yeah. start fighting other people and that and got into that and later when I got into college I met a friend that actually boxed then he took me down to his gym in um, Bermondsey, Fisher ABC, and then I just kind of picked it up from there. And Finchy ABC, that's obviously where AJ trains No, up. no, Fisher, Fisher. Fisher, Fisher okay, yeah, okay, yeah, down, cool. um, yeah, uh, down Bermondsey, yeah. How did you make sure it never, like, degenerated into a full-on brawl? Because we were all cool. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't anyone we didn't know. Right, okay. And anyone we didn't know, I think a few times I might have spotted someone I didn't know, they were actually martial artists. Like, I think right. I spotted one guy that actually done MMA, so he's not going to... You yeah, know, actually course, come yeah. out and beat. So like anyone that didn't box that wanted to take part, we were already cool, we were friends. Yeah, yeah. So like it was just between us though. So we would make a whole scene about it. I think Blackberry Days send the broadcast round like, oh yeah, you yeah, guys yeah, are fighting. Yeah. BBM. And, yeah, all of that BBM. Yeah. So like anyone that wasn't, you know, friends of us doesn't get involved and yeah, try yeah. to stir it or doesn't fight. We weren't just calling up random people, so we were all cool, so yeah. it never got over the mark and when it was time to stop, it stopped. Like people were there, older guys were there. So like just to make sure it didn't get out of hand. So it was yeah. all good. Yeah, it was all cool. Yeah. cool. Can you um, can you ever remember your first ever fight in the gym or or even a, a, a in competition professionally? Yeah, yeah. I remember my first bar and my first fight. My first bar was against someone that was like at the time like 20, 30 kilos smaller than me because I came to the gym like 40 years old when I was yeah. like 17, 18. And then um, I remember him just pinging me, sticking his tongue out at me, and I'm like, what am I gonna catch you watch? But I, I was too slow for him, and then obviously eventually got the hang of it, got the weight down, had my first fight at 77 kilos. Nervous though, nervous. Like all my family came to see me, cousins and stuff. It was at the Troxy in Lambhouse. Good venue there. I was nervous, but as soon as the bell went, I was all right. I managed to get the win and stuck at it. And that's the main thing, isn't it? And yeah. obviously your career seen you get some good victories along the way, completely undefeated. And then obviously it took you all the way up until a few weeks ago, when we met Mr. Heffron in, yeah. in that in that obviously barnstorming fight there, um, clearly you knocked the guy down. You had him wobbled. He's got back up, and it's been an absolute ding dong of a fight. I mean, do you think you should have been awarded that victory? Yeah, hundred percent. I thought I won. I felt like I won. I felt like I took a lot of the early rounds, and then I finished strong, mm-hmm. which made me think, you know, I, I, I picked up that win. But I don't know. The judges saw something else. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, he's been very vocal since on social media. There's been a couple of back and forths or anything. Do you um, do you have a message for him? I ain't got a message for him. Yeah. We're going to sort out soon anyway. Like, we've got the um, got the rematch lined up, so mm. we'll sort out then. Listen, he's going to say he thinks he won now because he, he, he's got the opportunity to say that. Because mm. he didn't. He, when I watch it back, when, you know, we'll get him ready to get a hand raised and all that, he didn't look confident that he'd done what he needed to do to win. Because apparently I was meant to be stepping up too early, I'm going to get knocked out, all of these things, blah, blah, blah. I'm not experienced enough and I'm a good fighter, but not better than him, all of that rubbish. Done my thing, stood my ground, put him over, finished the 10 rounds in a fight where I was, wasn't even meant to go halfway through the, yeah, yeah. the fight. So at the end of the day, that just shows where, I, where I'm at physically and mentally compared to him. So if he wants to be in the game that long and he's matching up to, to me against that, then obviously it is what it is. But 
he's obviously going to say he thinks he's winning. When we left the ring, he said he won 10 rounds or nine rounds apart from the round that he got put down. And when, we, when he got out, he's, the next day he won seven rounds. It is what it is, man. It doesn't matter anyway. So that, that potential fight, the rematch, which I hope you win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely hope you win, and I think you will. That'll lead you on to potential British Championship opportunity against Liam Williams. Yeah, I don't know what Liam Williams is doing with the title at the moment, to be honest. I don't know whether... I don't know what he's doing. I, to be honest, if he, he's managing for a world title, if I'd manage for a world title, I wouldn't be wasting my time with a British title. Yeah, yeah. He's won twice, at light like middle and at middle. Yeah. And he's been Brit he's two-time British champion, so yeah. I'd think he want to move on and challenge himself, but everybody's different. I don't know what his goals are. Maybe he hasn't won it outright yet and he wants to win it outright. But if that fight comes about and that's where I am, then obviously I've got to take it and I will take it. And I think everyone knows I'm up for a challenge nowadays. Yeah. I'm a bit of a, yeah. you know, bit of a daredevil in the sport right now. I'm taking fights and calling names that I sh shouldn't be calling, but that just makes me think everyone's in the game for the wrong reason if they think I shouldn't be saying these names. You know what I mean? Like, if they're going to be a fighter, there shouldn't be any fighter out there that you think, you know, you're not ready for. Especially if you're at that level. If I'm at the top of the domestic level, I'm ready for any fighter at that domestic level. Yeah. And then, I'm just touching on that domestic level as well. Obviously, what then usually happens, you have two routes in boxing. You can go straight to the British and then start knocking at the door of world level. Or what you could do is go the more traditional route, which is obviously the British title followed by the European and the Commonwealth titles as well. Is that something on your agenda? Yeah, all of it, to be honest. I yeah. think all of it, as long as I'm at this level, yeah. I'm going to be trying to win all the belts at this level. So. You get the British title, I want to win the British. If I get a chance to have to come off, I'll fight for that. And if the European comes about, I will 100% fight for that. that. It's a European title, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It's a good title to win. Um, but of course, the end, the end goal is to be a world champion. I want to be a world champion in this game. So if I get a chance to fight for the world title after the British, then of course I'll do that. So it's just whatever, whatever opportunity presents itself. Yeah. If the European presents itself, I go for that. If after this fight, you know, I defend it a few times, then there's a world title knocking on the door. I'll go for that too. Um, obviously, you're fighting out of the Peacock Gym now, at the moment. How good is this new facility? No, it's crazy. It's, it's pop up. It's pop up good. Yeah. I love it. It's like, I thought, oh, I'm going to miss all the guys down here, but I think the, the, the gym's so good that I forget them guys. No, I'm playing. <laughs> but no, it's a good gym. It's a good gym, man. It's popping nice facilities. It's, it's just us, comfortable. We, you know, we don't have to wait around for sparring or wait around to use the machines. We're just straight on it and we can yes. just do our sessions all at once and go on. Yeah, I thought I thought the spa that, that we witnessed earlier was a really, really good spa. I think the guy from... I'm going to try and pronounce his name. Yeah. Gadzi Aliyev? Yeah, from Dagestan. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you sparred earlier, mate. Yeah. That's who you sparred, mate. Yeah. He's, he's a good fighter, though. He, was, he thought he looked quite handy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I, a handful. I thought, I thought that you handled yourself really well, to be fair. He was coming at you from, from, a, from a lot of different angles, but obviously you're working a lot on the defensive shape and the defensive work in your game. And then still come back, you could tell you're more cuter with the way you were boxing, to be yeah. aware, which more tactically aware, which was really good. Um, so obviously, plans for the future we sort of been through. The, the goal of any boxer worth his salt is to get a, 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 you know, a world title. Mm -hmm. um, the fact at the moment, surely now, it's all systems go for Heffron. It's your whole world focused on this guy and taking him out. Mm -hmm. Simple yeah, as that. 100%. That's my, that's my main focus. Everything else sounds nice, but mm. I've got to get past that so before I can move on and start thinking about other things. Like Every time that you have a fight, you just got to reset and think, forget about everything else that's potentially there and worry about what's ahead of you because everything else that's potentially there can be taken away from you yeah. if you're not focused on what's ahead of you. So yeah. I've got to focus on that, focus on the rematch, get that out of the way, be inconvincibly this time, make sure there's nothing left to say oh but he done this better than yeah. that take everything he does good away from him and you know get the win and then move on like the other day i saw i was ranked number 40 with wo and i was like hey that's 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 good that's nice that's, and then i realized hold on but if i don't go into this fight and win yeah that's gone so yeah, i'll celebrate yeah. that later let's focus on their and maybe hopefully by the time i beat him i'm ranked a bit higher for you yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's nothing to be sniffed at. You know, you, there's only potentially, as you say, there's 14 spaces between you and your goal. And I think, yeah, take on Heffron, take him out, and then start to climb that table. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure um, sitting down with you. We've been following you really closely um, from, from where we're from, across the other side of the country. Yeah, that's nice. And um, we are big, big fans of yours on the TTM podcast. And, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you got anything else you want to ask or add? No, although I, I do want to just say, Touching back on Liam Williams. Oh yeah. Does he want to spar yet? <laughs> um, yeah, he put out a post saying uh, he needs sparring, and I saw it. And I thought, right, that's not saying that. And then got to the gym and I'm like, oh yeah, he needs sparring. I was like, you know what? 
I'll, I'll reply to the tweets. I replied saying, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm good for it. I didn't expect him to reply, to be honest, in the, in, in the first place. And then he messaged me back saying, ah, cool, you good for next week? And I messaged him back saying, yeah, I'm good for next week. He said, cool, let's go. Obviously, he got to the week he was talking about, and by the end of the week, I, I just asked him, I tweeted him, I said, I was still good for this week, and I never got a reply. But I think maybe he thinks, I'm gonna pull it out on Twitter, like, we'll probably spa, I might try too hard, and then everything, I might try to pull it out there on socials and be like, oh, look, I got the better of him, which yeah, I would never yeah. do because that's not my personality, I wouldn't ever do that in a spa. Or maybe because he's working with Mark Heffron, he thought, oh, okay, cool, I might as well just, you know, help out Mark and it will seem like he's, you know, jumping, I don't know, yeah. switching sides, I don't know what he's, he's chain of thought, but wherever it is, it is what it is. Uh, I'll make it clear that if I'm spying anyone, I wouldn't go out there to yeah, try yeah. and make noise about it. I think one thing we can tell from you, Danzo, and we and we like that about you is that you don't care. You will fight anyone, anywhere, anytime, from the minute you put a pair of gloves on to right here, right now. And yeah. we, we appreciate that and we respect that. 